I'm Jane. I love history and storytelling. My name is Bert, and I like the technical side of paranormal investigations. We gather lore from history and use modern science to investigate the paranormal. Because you can't have one without the other. Unearthly. History and Paranormal Investigation. Ever since I lived in a haunted house as a child, old buildings have held a certain intrigue for me. On family vacations, we would often take tours of older homes, much to my delight and the great boredom of my stepsisters. One such trip was to Galveston, Texas, where we toured the Moody Mansion. I'd seen ghosts before around my childhood home, but not really anywhere else. Once we walked inside the front door and walked to the stairs, I saw a woman standing there. She had white hair piled on top of her head in a chic updo and a long dress. She saw me, looked a little off-put, and disappeared. I never mentioned this story to anyone else until Bert and I decided to travel to Galveston to investigate the Grand Galvez, one of the most haunted hotels in Texas. Moody Mansion is a 28,000 square foot, four story home in Galveston that was built between 1893 and 1895. In 1899, when the wealthy widow that originally owned the mansion died, the house was placed for sale. Many bids came in for this house until September of 1900 when the Galveston hurricane ravaged the island. William Lewis Moody Jr.'s bid was the only one remaining after the storm. The Moody family empire began with his father's cotton business. Their wealth would continue to grow as they pivoted to encompass the banking, ranching, insurance, newspaper, railroad, and hotel industries. In 1954, the Moody's firstborn, Mary Moody Northern, moved back into her childhood home after her husband died. She would live there with her father until he died seven weeks later. Mary continued to live there until Hurricane Alicia devastated Galveston with wind speeds of 115 miles per hour in August of 1983. In the early 1990s, Moody Mansion would open as a house museum and find its spot on the National Register of Historic Places. Galveston was experiencing some rough weather while we were there, making us grateful that our investigation at Grand Galvez would be indoors. With knowledge of the impending weather, we decided to walk around the exterior fencing that surrounds Moody Mansion, our first night on the island. Part of me really wanted to see if I would be able to see the same woman I saw when I first visited. I saw a woman at the top floor window. It was the same woman I saw all those years ago. Again, quite outdone that I could see her. I thought, I'm glad I can see you. I was here as a little girl and I saw you. I've learned a lot since then, and I wanted to see if I could see you again. As soon as that thought was completed, the floodlights in front of the house started flickering, and dogs across the street began barking. I laughed and explained to Bert what had just happened. The next day before checking into Grand Galvez, we decided to take the self-guided tour of Moody Mansion. Walking inside this time, I felt myself drawn to the dining room, specifically the door between that room and the conservatory. I felt a wave of emotion come over me, as if I could feel the family in that room. Giggling, stories told, memories made, meals shared, it was all there in that room at that moment. I also heard a woman whisper in my ear, I'm glad you came back. After having a brief cry and whispering thank you, we toured the rest of the house. (laughs) 
As we approached the staircase from the second floor, one of the docents stopped us. She asked if we had any questions, and we raved about how much we loved the house. She then shared with us that the Moody family frequently dined together. Libby Moody took great pride in the fact that she was a hands-on parent to her children and that the family shared meals as often as possible, making them an outlier among their Victorian-era societal peers. Not knowing how Libby Moody structured the traditions in her home, I felt myself tearing up again, so I thanked her for the story, and we left to check into the hotel. Named after Bernardo de Galvez, who was titled as Viscount of Galveston in 1783 after he surveyed the island, Hotel Galvez opened on June 10, 1911. Built on the site of several previous hotels, the goal of constructing this 226-room hotel was to rebuild the tourism industry in Galveston after the hurricane of 1900. Hotel Galvez would go on to host some of the biggest names in entertainment, politics, and society in its earliest days. On October 3, 1940, William Moody Jr. would purchase the Hotel Galvez. Under his ownership, the hotel would become barracks for the United States Coast Guard, as well as a hotbed of illegal gambling, earning it the nickname Playground of the Southwest. During the 1950s, the Texas Rangers shut down the illegal gambling activities and essentially crushed a big part of the tourism to the island. In 1979, Hotel Galvez was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. In May of 2021, the hotel's name was officially changed to the Grand Galvez. Founded in 1839, at the turn of the last century, Galveston was a coastal boomtown in Texas. Being the fourth largest city in the state at that time, Galveston was often referred to as the Wall Street of the Southwest. As one can see time after time throughout history, when people prosper, they become lulled into a false sense of security. During Galveston's time of astronomical growth, many weather experts warned the island's residents of their vulnerable position in the Gulf of Mexico. The idea of a seawall was tossed about, but not considered a necessary project for the city to spend their budget. The storm that would later destroy Galveston hit Cuba on September 3rd. The hurricane's path wasn't more accurately acknowledged because there was an ordered communication block between the United States and Cuba because of remaining tensions from the Spanish-American War of 1898. Cuban meteorologists had access to some of the most cutting-edge technology for tracking storms at the time, but because of political tensions and grievances, the victims of the Galveston storm paid the ultimate price. While some residents decided to evacuate to the mainland, many of the people of Galveston saw no need to flee. Despite warnings from Isaac Klein, the director of the Weather Bureau's Galveston office, the folks there were used to rain and saw no need for concern. The storm began in the early morning hours of September 8th, with the water significantly rising between 3 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. In 1900, Galveston was around nine feet above sea level, when the storm surge hit, it was over 15 feet of water. At one point, it's said that the entire island was at least 10 feet underwater. Based on eyewitness accounts that day of debris that was seen flying around during the storm, modern scientists estimate that the wind speeds were 135 miles per hour, making this a Category 4 storm. People reported seeing the water rise as fast as 4 feet in 4 seconds. Another five feet of water rushed into the city around 8.30 p.m. Houses were thrown off their foundation, leaving 17,000 people homeless. Those survivors were given army surplus tents and encouraged to set up shelter along the beach. The beach became so packed with tents and survivors that it would be known as the White City on the Beach. With all the bridges, railroads, telegraph, and telephone lines down between Galveston and mainland Texas washed away, there was no news of the devastation reaching anyone and therefore no help at first. A wall of debris approximately three miles long and 30 feet tall towered in the middle of Galveston after the storms. Rescuers claimed they could hear people crying and screaming for help under the debris during the searches for survivors.
The people that didn't survive were found scattered throughout Galveston. Drastic measures were taken in response to this overwhelming death toll. 50 African American men were forced at gunpoint to load the dead onto barges, where they would then be dumped into the bay. Around 700 bodies were dumped into the Gulf of Mexico before they began washing ashore. Whenever bodies would show up on the beach, funeral pyres were erected and the dead were burned on site. Authorities passed out free whiskey to the residents to aid in their grief and trauma. While it's believed that a list of those lost was never completed, estimates range between 6,000 and 12,000. Included in that grim statistic are the 10 sisters and 90 children from St. Mary's Orphan Asylum. Not long after the storms began, the floodwaters reached the children's dorm. As a way to calm the children, the sisters began to sing the song, Queen of Waves. Once they had safely evacuated to the second floor, the sisters gathered long pieces of clothesline while they continued to sing to the children. The sisters took the clothesline and used it to tether the children together like a train, also tying themselves in the train to keep everyone safe and together. The three boys that survived that day talk about how brave the sisters were while they sang and tethered the children together. Their names are William Murney, Frank Madeira, and Albert Campbell. These boys were found in a tree together more than a day after the storm had ended, clinging to it as the waters receded. When the sisters were found, they were still holding the children they were trying to save, keeping their promise that they would never leave them. Every year on September 8th, people still gather to sing Queen of the Waves to honor those lost during the Galveston hurricane of 1900. Sister Catherine, one of the nuns who passed away in the storm, is said to still roam the halls of Hotel Galvez. But just like any other haunted site, there's verifiable history and then there's folklore associated with the hauntings of the Hotel Galvez. Of all the ghost stories around Galveston, one that lingers despite a lack of historical evidence is the story of Audra, who is said to haunt room 501 of the Grand Galvez. According to lore, Audra was engaged to a local mariner in the 1950s. When her husband was away on the ship, Audra would stay at the hotel in room 501. As a way to look as far out as possible into the horizon, she would climb to the west turret of the hotel. One night after a particularly rough storm, Audra received word that her fiancé's ship had capsized and no survivors were found. Broken by this news, Audra climbed to the same turret where she would wait for his return and hung herself. In an almost Shakespearean twist, her fiancé returned a few days after her funeral. While this tragic tale is compounded by visions of a young woman in white wandering the hotel, there is no historical evidence that anyone by the name of Audra died in the Grand Galvez any time during the 1950s. Hopefully, with further paranormal research, the truth to this woman's identity will be discovered. Perhaps she's the same ghost woman who is said to wander the pier at night during the 1860s. Until then, Audra remains an ethereal, yet inaccurate character in the lore surrounding the Grand Galvez. Other accounts of paranormal activity all around the hotel come from both guests and staff alike. Vacuum off, and I heard somebody say, get out, exactly like that. So I looked around, I'm starting there, I said, okay, <laughs> somebody's playing. So I came out the hallway, I looked down this hallway, I walked all the way down and looked that way, there was nobody up here for me. So I went back in the room, I said, Audrey, please, just let me finish, and I'm gone. So I started vacuum again, right? And then the, the vacuum just suddenly went off. So I plugged, I plugged it, plugged it back up. It wouldn't come back on. So I'm looking around the room, and you can see actually see the faucet, the handle turn on by itself, and the water came on by itself. <laughs> it had to, I had to have somebody that would be cleaning it for at least a month. 
flowers in between your bottles. So, but when you clean, you clean around, around this time, though, right? So it's not like dark or anything. So well, a lot of the um, the guest comes, they rent the room. They have a lot of stories that go things goes on in there. Yeah. And some of the other guests in other rooms, they say at the middle of the night, late at night, two or three in the morning, they're here knock at the door. And when they come and answer the door, it's nobody's there. So <laughs> you know, she wanders the halls, ups and downs. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. While Audra, a.k.a. the lovelorn lady, and Sister Catherine's apparitions have been seen several times here, there have been many other occurrences reported as well. A spa bathroom where a staff member heard her name whispered behind her. A man with glasses captured in many photos. Even reports of children's spirits, specifically a spirit of one little girl whose apparition has been seen many times near the hotel lobby, the gift shops, and the stairs. There's even accounts from construction workers who have worked on the grounds, and without any knowledge about the spirits here, they saw a little girl playing around the construction area. The apparition was so real they alerted the hotel staff, only to find out what she really was. Many other guests, including ourselves, have heard sounds of children running and laughing through the hallways of the now Grand Galvez, as well as keys of the piano in the lobby being randomly played. So we got our equipment waiting for us to come back, but we're going to do a little walkthrough yep. of Hotel Galvez. Here we go. Grand Galvez, okay. so nice. Here we go. <sighs> okay. Right. So let's go up to the sixth floor, I guess, since that's the first place we can access. Sixth floor? Or the highest floor we can access, so rather can just kind of see what we can see. Okay. Because we noticed when we were in the elevator earlier that... Um, you have to have like a special key access to get to the top two floors, the seventh and eighth. So okay. we'll go up to the six. I was gonna say like these this wallpapers, so just mm -hmm. entrancing. Right, it's a hawk and a monkey. It's a very Here's a good look at it. Biological combination. Also love this. Oh yeah. Little male slot. Look at that. So cool. See that? Yeah, that just Cutler is the brand on it. Yeah, you would just put mail. Boop, boop, right there. Boop. It's going up. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for having us, Grand Calvas. Thank you. Alright, so six. Now this one won't even take you up to the eighth floor. Schmancy. Oh, wow. So it's literally that mm -hmm. other one it's only. Just the elevator. Eighth Interesting. Floor. I wonder when this one didn't go all the way up. <laughs> it's so quiet. It's so quiet up here. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's where the ice machine is. Oh, okay. Mm. Got a few out there. Like some place like this, but have like a top stairs, like cool floor access. Let's go this way. So, again, this is the sixth floor. Yeah. I keep getting like a little like push up here. Like it just moved like that, like kind of right here on the leg. Hmm. Oh. Noted. Mm -hmm. Do the floors, too. <coughs> it's more floral. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is the end of the hall. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, where to next? Um, I guess we'll go back to the fifth floor, get a little footage next to that, and then maybe go down to the lobby and see where we can wander around. Okay. Of James. And again, right when I put this bracelet on, it hurts just on my wrist. It's weird. Okay. So, 
So we're on the fifth floor, and 501 is the room that's considered one of the most haunted rooms here. And are we going the right way? Yeah, we are in the room. Whoa. Ooh. It's at the very end. She could have jumped out of this right here, wouldn't she? I thought I swore I just heard whispering back there. And nobody's down there. Uh, and the TV across over here is on. This one's on. That was like definitely back there. I know, but I'm just saying for the sake of. Oh, okay. Camera sounds. You can call it. Oh, okay. No, one more sound. I was already checking that out. That'd be so cool. This room right here is where a woman named Audra would stay and wait for her husband, her fiance, who was a um, he was some kind of like ship person, like a mariner or something like that. And there was a really bad storm one night, and Audra got news that her husband should have been capsized, or her fiance should have been capsized. So in her grief, she takes her life by jumping off the high point of the hotel. A few days later, her fiance comes back. He had survived somehow and found out that she was dead. Which was so sad. But Audra is one of the ghosts that is in the Hotel Galvez, and people believe that she's still tethered to this room. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get this room tonight because apparently there's an air conditioning issue with it. Yeah. Um, which is unfortunate, but it's really cool, though. So, yeah. At least we know there's nobody in there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Yeah. It's just such a sad story. And it's sad down there. Like, it doesn't. It feels like you're almost in a hole down there. Like, I, I wanted. Yeah, it's like. I had, felt like I just. It's mm -hmm. so serious for some reason. I feel like we could come back and do, like, a puck session there, because that wouldn't be allowed. Yeah, okay. You know? I'm down. Yeah, that's one of the good things about having like options with your equipment is um, sometimes you're in areas where you can't really like use a lot of equipment, like a hotel like this. Like if we did a spirit box session here, people would complain and we get kicked out. So kind of have to use what we've got. Mm -hmm. And we have plenty, <laughs> plenty of an option. So. Oh, it's like a thin gay on, sorry. <laughs> so, super strong. So I guess we'll head down to the lobby now. Okay. Yeah, that just felt so different back there. Like, it, it's Ooh. like, it's kind of like when you're driving and you go, like, down a little bit, like, just enough that it makes your ears pop and it gets your stomach. Like, it kind of has that feeling to it. Hmm. So we're going down to the lobby. Down to the lobby. Okay. Down here. I love their choice of the red glass. It's so nice. Well, and then like having the solid red Sounds good. And the, these are the spots that I feel like we kind of had a feeling for. Man, it's so cold in here.
some female in the United States. I think I said it on the video, I'm like, it's so cold in here. Yeah, like it was spooky earlier, just, but like, it's hella spooky in here now. Like, it's cold. Yeah, I'm not, like, full body chills right now. Yeah. I'm gonna get a temperature reading here. Oh, nice. It says 76 and a zero reading all around us. Yeah, said like go into any ballroom the front lady yeah the lady like that, if you see a ballroom open go in yeah exactly the lady that gave the ghost tours told us that but well she also checked us out so we are not trespassing we do not we have uh, recommend trespassing let's go down towards that end of the lobby and see what's done that way I'm definitely going back there. Jane and I can't help but feel a strong energy all over this hotel. We explore more of the halls, take in all of the historic tidbits scattered everywhere. Although we don't experience anything else during this walkthrough, we can't help but feel an excitement to see what this gorgeously haunted hotel will show off for us.
We slowly head back to our room which will be headquarters for the evening and get ready for a session with the Paranormal Puck by Room 501. All right, round two. Yeah. And we're going to 501 here for a Paranormal Puck session. That's some strange vibes, like really heavy vibes yeah. by the like, 501, so. so. It felt like we were falling down into a hole. Yeah. Like. like not actually falling, but just like that. Mm. And it would be so wild to see the view she had mm -hmm. of the ocean while she was like having all these feelings and like, mm -hmm. yeah. and then he didn't even die. Yeah. Like he actually came well, looking weird. for her. The positioning of that room is right next to a fire escape and I don't know if that fire escape would have been there and used as a fire escape back then, but yeah. it has to the legend for sure. Okay. Huh? That smells different. Could be somebody's cologne, maybe. Yeah, but it was like really floral last time. Like really floral through the whole hall. Like the cologne's kind of dissipated. Yeah. That smell. going properly with oh, it. Is it okay to talk to you? Uh, Doug? Fact. Yeah. Fact. Anthony. Oh, that's what they say. Anthony came through. Anthony? I don't know what her fiance's name was. Oh. Um, I'm just going to ask if she likes it here. Do you like it? Do you have the screen recording going? Yeah. I do not like it here. Why don't you like it? This always feels like I'm texting with the ghosts. Yeah. This is the first time we've really used them. Wow. The lagoon's loud. Is the water loud? The water's right there, too. Uh -huh. Do you mean the ocean? Or the gulf?
try again. How do you feel? How do you feel? Veronica. Miss Veronica. Are you here by yourself? Difference. Are you ever by yourself when you're when you're in a haunted hotel? Yeah. When you're a spirit. Do you want to keep going here? I, I feel like we're pushing it. Yeah. Okay, well, let's we'll get her off the device. We could go somewhere else. Yeah. I definitely want to use the SLS in that uh, So let me get the screen recording off. Oh, yeah. Do you want to do a puck session in the ballroom? I figured if we got it out, might as well. Yeah. Cool. So that one's saved. Mm -hmm. Man, that was pretty direct. I mean, it wasn't like... Well, I just started talking to her, like, how I do with, like, the guys that I'm more familiar with. So I'm just like, hey, Audra, you know, hello. Mm -hmm. And she's like, dark. Yeah, that like that was the first response. It was pretty direct. I don't know what her fiance's <sighs> name was, but the name Anthony came through, and then also the name Veronica came through, which those are pretty specific names. Mm -hmm. And now, once we get like Pat is a name that'll come through pretty often. We get Larry and Tom that come through pretty often, and yeah. sometimes I think Tom could be a glitch, and even Pat could be a glitch. Sound like tapping like in, did, on that it, wood right there. It did, and it sounded like it came from right here. Yeah. And Pat could be a glitch. Sound like tapping like in, did, on that it, wood right there. Pat could be a glitch. Sound like tapping like in, did, on that it, wood right there. It did, and it sounded like it came from right here. Yeah. Like it was like a yeah, like just like a, a fingernail. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry. What's that? Okay, secret of note for Illuminati layer. Oh, the back rooms, or whatever they're called. <laughs> That's what this is. Just go up a little. I don't know. Oh, this is like a bridal suite area, I bet. It's so much more creepy to me. It did. It's kind of got like as time goes yeah. by. It's like what they would listen to. Creepier and creepier back here. I know, my hair gets the creepier it gets. Where do you want to do the session? Because I 
because I can set up the tripod down like on one of these tables or something. Oh, yeah, let's see that. Because we both got a feeling like dead center. Yeah. So like this table right here? Right yeah. Here. here, I'll just hold that one. Oh. Since this one you can't see. Oh. Here, I can hold the night vision. Actually, you, you hold this one since it's not... Do you have the phone? Yeah. So, just to introduce ourselves real quick, my name's Jane, this is Bert, and we'd like to talk to you. Now we've got this little device over here, it's a circle. Somebody standing behind me. So I like swear to God, there's someone so standing tough. behind me. There's someone standing behind me. Uh huh. It's a man. He's real tall. He's really tall. Okay, Broad shoulder. There you go. Okay. You know how to work here. Yeah. Um, I can't do this. Okay. And, uh, That's true. Rain. It is raining outside behind me. It is raining. Uh huh. It's been raining like all night. Do you like the rain? It stopped. I asked if they like the rain and it stopped. <laughs> I bet they don't. Yeah. I bet they hate it. Well, I mean. I can just hit the app and we'll come back yeah, up and do everything it's supposed to be right. Okay. It'll show like a picture. Mm -hmm. After it connects. Cool. Yeah, it's Man, that's such a common thing. Like every time we ask something very like very specific and spot on like, like that. Triggering, you uh huh. Know? And then it's the oh. I feel like static on my arms, but nowhere else. I don't know what I did. After Jane feels someone behind her, then asks the paranormal puck directly, the puck freezes up and doesn't want to work anymore. So we decide to switch and go to the SLS camera. My wrist has been hurting like all night at particular points and it just hurts super bad and then it just goes away. And it's only this wrist. Try and take the bracelet off and see if it hurts. I, I did early remember when you were talking and yeah. I was like I had to take it off and it stopped hurting. But first, on the way back to headquarters, we find the staff elevator and spontaneously decide to make our way back up to the sixth floor. It's like a whole different world up here. Oops. Cool. Okay. So, so far, all the floors are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. I think we should go to the room, get the SLS, and go to the fifth floor with it. Okay. Yeah. There you go. on the stairs. Yes. Okay. I didn't have to push the bar on that one.
Mm-hmm. Oh, it's cute. The camel full of orbits. smaller. Story's very well known. If you can stand over by those doors, I'll be able to see you. And so will everybody else. I don't like my got a lot of static on my face right now. Yeah. Just like on my nose. Like if you can come stand right over here. I'll stand here with you. If you want to. Her story being told. 
for some reason. I wonder what you, I wonder why. I don't think it's fake. I think I feel like it's about her name's wrong or something, something like that. Something, yeah. There's something not right about it. What did the name Veronica came through earlier? Veronica, yeah. Veronica. Audrey just seems like... Audra. Audra. Oh. Oh, no, that's about it, no. stand right here next to me. Let's look out the window together. Do you ever look out the window at the, the lights? The big circle across the street? I would always look out this window if I were up here. It's a really pretty view. You've got the ocean. You've got the pier. All the people going by. All the ships sailing by. I would want to stay here too. What do you think? Anything glitch or be act different? Nothing. That's weird. I know you have to be within like 10, 10 feet. Yeah. In fact, we're 10 to 15 feet. Mm -hmm. This thing goes. It's really not that far. Yeah. Oh, I'd rather, um, I'd rather do spirit bumps, or not spirit bumps, but paranormal bumps. Whereabouts? Um, downstairs. I don't know where you want to bring those downstairs. Well, let's do a spirit box session, maybe, mm -hmm. in the ballroom. Um, if you want to do Estes Method, I can go under, and you can film it. Okay. We're going to the our room. Yes. Wow, that looks cool. Whoa. <laughs> well, so this is like I see stuff everywhere. Hey, shine it down the hallway. I thought I saw something there for a second. Okay, there's an elevator sound. Like somebody was like running upstairs. It did sound like it, didn't it? <laughs> I could literally just saw someone stand at the end of that hallway for a second. That thing's been freaking out all morning mm -hmm. or all night. It's like, why is that freaking out? Right. session down in the ballroom. That's our secret one. Mm -hmm. So 
little creepy. It feels so weird every time coming in here. Sacrifice? What's your name? What's your name? Enemy. Enemy and sharp. Sharp? Yeah, why are you my enemy? Why are you my enemy? Scroop oh, you think you're more pure than me. Okay, do you not Thing in here. There, there's pressure on my back. There's like a hand on my back, on this, on my right side. The tiny of my shoulder blade. Yeah, let's go back here. Can you grab it? You can keep it going. To you. I said, do you like this hotel? And it said, but. But. <laughs> are you following us? Ashes. I said, are you following us? And it said, ashes. My name is Jane. That's yours. Sounds like there's somebody behind me. Debbie. Well. Got the name Debbie. Okay, that's 
it's hard for me to tell if my eyes are getting playing tricks on like looking at the small screen. Yeah. I have to let's see the footage later. It looked like something like dashed between those doors, but it could have just been my eyes. Debbie came through, so I'm asking Debbie if she's happy. Rent. Do you have to pay rent now? Do you pay rent here? Ask this method real quick. March oh. And herd also came through. What was it? March and herd. Okay. Huh. So I'm trying to ask this method real quick. And I'll be asking the questions. Yeah. And Jane won't be able to hear me. Mm -hmm. Oh. Howdy. still be going so if something goes through then it'll come through. You turn up a little bit. Okay. Who's here with us right now? Oh she's still getting the spirit. Is there a male or a female with us so, right now? So what? Can you tell us your name? A long time. You've been here a long time? Thank you for talking to us. A man's voice, but I can't tell. So you're a male? What is your name? Can you tell us your name? It's just noises from the staff. A little girl. Can you... Interesting. Can you touch Jane's back again? Listen. What are you trying to tell me? We're here for you. Can you tell us what you need? There's a little girl and a man that keep coming through over and over again. The little girl's kind of singing and the man's kind of answering direct with whatever you're asking, but I can't hear him that clearly. Okay, because I'm kind of asking them both, but... Oh, wait, somebody's coming through. Are you in danger? Do you do you like this the male? First. Are you in danger? Do you need yeah. a... I think he said that's for you to know. Whoa. Well, we're not here to hurt you. We're just here to talk to you. So thank you for talking to us. But if you're... There's one man's voice. Okay. Do you know this little girl? There's a lecture. 
Jen's taking her headphones off so she can make sure she's not being too loud. There's a lecture. What are you lecturing about? New man's voice. Help. So Little we, girl's voice. Okay. Did she help you while you were here? Was it your daughter? I'm lost. Mm. Well, we are trying to just communicate with you and ending something scared me <clears throat> was it the weather it was steep it was steep thank you for talking keep on talking to us please what were you scared of it was over me the water are you talking about water Little girl, are you okay? Are you happy or are you sad? No. Do you mind us being here? No. Almost. Oh, I heard that. <laughs> I could hear that, like, through the headphones. It was hard. What? Okay, so... My best. Did you try to help her and you couldn't help her? Or did she try to help you? It was pink. Oh. So I'm talking to both of them. So can you tell me one of your names, please? Just the name? Or age? A number? This is incredible. Unconvincible. Well, oh. Well, we appreciate you trying to convince us. Cause you better stop. There you go. Who is that? See, so, uh, thank you for talking to us. And I know this is weird, but we're able to communicate. Good night. And you've shown us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The man again, but it's real clever. Wow, that was really that was amazing. <laughs> the staff member came, but he's, he was cool with it. So, oh. yeah, he uh-huh. didn't say anything. But we should probably get going. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so there was definitely a male and a female, or uh-huh. the little girl coming through a lot talking. Yeah. But they it seemed oh. like they were both excited to talk to me, but like both kind of scared. They were shy. They yeah. weren't really sure. The little girl was telling the man. Okay, because I couldn't tell. I was like, did she help him in their past life, or did he help her? How do I turn this girl over here? Uh-huh. Here, let me take this real quick. I turned oh, sorry. Back. Oh, okay. Did he turn over here? No. Stop. Hopefully we can get out. It was kind of like the, the little girl wanted the man to help us. Like help him, like she needed help talking to us or something. Mm-hmm. Like the man could help her talk to us, like help them. Mm-hmm. So, wow, that was amazing. Mm-hmm. Oh, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just kind of so much because they were both talking so much, but like, um, I get the feeling that they hang out a lot together. The yeah, girl that's what I was like. If you're troubling her, then leave her alone, and then she was like all happy out of nowhere so I'm like okay is this your daughter maybe? Mom and she helped you know how 
that like Sally will sometimes like run around us and play in a circle. Mm -hmm. Like it kind of felt like she was doing that, like kind of like skipping around us. But I got the feeling that there was something with her neck and her face that was off. Oh, okay. Like, was, like, well, it seemed like I was talking about like like water. Are, are you scared of water? Because somebody was saying like they were scared. Yeah, it was like. Whoosh, and I was like, are you? Were you? In underwater or something. I forgot what I said, but it sounded like we were around this corner. It sounded like one of them maybe witnessed somebody drowned. Yeah, they probably did. And like wanted to help the other one, but they couldn't. Mm -hmm. Or they did. But, and then they're like together now or something. I don't know. Oh. Another one in for the books. Get it. Yeah. Another haunted hotel investigated. 